Enter into his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Enter into his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Enter into his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, we have overcome, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have overcome by the power of your name. Jesus, you're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah. The one who made the way for us to triumph in his name. Come on, we have overcome. Yes, Lord. We have overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have overcome. We have overcome by the power of your name. Jesus, you're the one. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the one made the way, the one who made the way for us to triumph in this name. One more time, we have overcome. Come, hey, we have overcome. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, we have overcome. We have overcome by the power. Of your name, Jesus, you're the one. Jesus, you're the one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who made a way for us. The one who made a way for us to triumph in his name. The one who made a way for us. The one who made a way for us to triumph in his name. Lord, we thank you. Lift up your hands on the gates. Be you lifted up ye everlasting doors. That the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Is the King of Glory? Lift up your hands. Oh, you get ye everlasting doors, ye ancient doors. That the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of all the mighty one of Israel. He's the king of glory. May every beat, may every trap, may every ordinance of the devil be permanently put to shame concerning this ministry. In the name of Jesus. Yes, upon my hands. Oh, yes, Lord. There shall be deliverance and holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess our possessions. We possess our possessions, Lord. The Lord of Righteousness worships in the church, the Mercy Apostolic Faith Ministries, Lord. We possess our possessions in the name of Jesus. Everyone on the sound of my voice, we possess our possessions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's be seated. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for making it. Amen. God bless you, those online. Can I know those who are online right now? Praise God. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you, Sister Miriam. God bless you, Sister Karen, Sister Rebecca. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And those who are going to join us, okay, and those who are going to watch and replay, God bless you. I'm going to start this conference. I want to appreciate the apostle, my wife. Amen. My great support, my great uh, pillar. God bless you, the apostle. This is the success for the conference, for the uh, governors, Sister, uh, Sister Mary, uh, who is helping in the children's department, Sister Hester. Amen. God bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I just want to start by appreciating everyone, you know, who has been consistent with this conference. God bless you. 
Uh, thank you for making yourselves available to be taught, to be empowered, to be nurtured of the Lord. Uh, everything I do here is by the help of the Holy Spirit. And uh, thank you for receiving that uh, uh, great impartation of, of, of the power of God through this uh, conference that we've been having. I am praying that the time you've spent will not be in vain. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I am praying that there shall be manifestations. Amen. There shall be manifestations. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when you, when you admire the gifts of God, in the ministers of God. Let me tell you something. It's usually a process. Once you have passed through the processes, all that you desire will come. All that you desire will come. I, I never imagined my, myself, I've never thought that the Lord will speak to me and I will say it and it will be so. Never, never thought it would be possible. But over time, with my consistency with God, over time, Certain gifts just started to come. Some that I prayed for, some I, that I did not pray for. They just come. You know, as a baby grows and matures over time, you just begin to see that, you know, things are happening. Things that the baby couldn't do before. You know, wow, my baby is growing. You're no longer a baby. Praise God. I, you know, I will never forget the day I, I had to get married. It, it still seemed like, it was like movies to me. When I went with some people to go ask for the hand of my wife in marriage, it's like I was watching a Nigerian movie. <laughs> you know how these people will go and ask for someone's hand in marriage, you know. But the time came. But there was a time I, I couldn't think of that because I was not ready. If I told my parents I wanted to be to be married, you know, like small boy, you want to be married, you're not you're not even married, you want to face. <laughs> you want to be married? You know, but time just flies. Same way in the things of the kingdom. So those things, those spiritual gifts that you so desire, they will come. They will come. There's, God will never hold them from you. You just need to follow this process. There's a process of growth that God wants to see. You know, because God is not going to send you to a place where you'll be destroyed. You know, God is not going to leave you to be destroyed. And that is why God has put order in different uh, phases of our lives. In the ministry, there's order. In, in a typical family, there's order. Praise God. Everything you do, there's order. So today, I'm going to focus more on order. I'm going to focus more on order. But I just want us to look at the overhacking reason why we are doing what we're doing. Let's look at St. Matthew chapter 28. We're just going to do that real quick. St. Matthew chapter 28. I also want to thank everyone who has submitted the summary of the past classes. God bless you. Thank you for being obedient. You know, I pray that God will honor you and perfect all that concerns you. Let's continue to be consistent. The ones that are yet to be submitted, please work on it and submit them. You know, this one also, I would love for you to also submit it going forward. Amen. So, so Matthew chapter 28, let's take it from verse uh, 16. Amen. Then the eleven disciples went away in Galilee into a mountain. I'm just going to read mine from here so that I don't have to turn back. So Matthew chapter 28 from verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Very important. You have been appointed to this ministry. Everyone on the Son of Man, you have been appointed here. And everyone appointed needs to receive instructions. Amen. We cannot just operate anyhow. There is a order that God has put in place. You have been appointed here. Hallelujah. And because you have been appointed here to serve, to be a role model to others, God is going to give us instructions. Amen. And the instructions are, are embedded in his word. They are embedded in the vision that God has for us. Let's look at verse 70 together. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Don't be a, a doubting Thomas. <laughs> Don't be one of those whose heart is not fully here. 
Don't be one of those. Because those whose hearts are not fully committed to the service of the Lord, they won't get the fullness of God. I want you to have the fullness of God. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, just like I'm speaking to you in the name of Jesus. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That power God is, has released to us. Say, so I receive that power in Jesus' name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord from my mouth in Jesus' name. So we can say the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus shall be powerful in my mouth. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus shall not be powerless in my mouth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Verse 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. This is a command from our Lord Jesus Christ to us. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This is something that we have to do together to be able to teach all nations. Verse 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. There's a vision on this ministry. And that vision will share with us from time to time. Amen. Part of it is to shed up growth in us. To move. When God brings us to people, we meet with them, and anything in their life that may be hindering them from moving forward, God helps us with his, with the leading of his word to help those people come out of it so that they can enjoy the abundant life that Jesus has come to give us. That's why he says, teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I'm going to quickly share this very quickly with us. And I'm saying this because of the prayer that I just prayed, that the name of Jesus will not be powerless in our mouths. That's why I was counseling someone this past week. And this person told me that she was praying against something and she felt like the demons that she was dealing with did not understand the name of Jesus. She felt like the demons understood a different language. I hope I said what she said right. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. I had to correct the lady and said to her, no, 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 no. Demons understand the name of Jesus. So I told her, I said, but you who are calling the name of Jesus must carry the name of Jesus with a faithful hand. You cannot carry a powerful name with a weak hand. And that's why you and I we must not touch on clean things. That's, that's why demons can beat up some people. It's possible. They call on the name of Jesus and demons will beat them up. And we can see that in the book of Acts. How the demons beat up some people who are calling the name of Jesus because they were not they were not dedicated unto Jesus. They were not committed to Jesus. So the name of Jesus was powerless in their mouths. So you and I, as role models, we must make sure that our work with God is genuine. We, we, we must not deceive ourselves. We must not have one, one leg in God and one leg out of God. We must not do that. We must be true to ourselves. Jesus said, let your nay be nay. Let your yea be yea. Praise God. Don't be double-minded because a double-minded person is unstable in all these ways. Whenever you see that there's a pattern of instability in what you're doing, it's a time for you to, to run to God and spend more time and fix yourself. Because God will never bring instability. He's a God of order. Now, I'm going to want us to turn our Bibles down to the book of St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. I'm focusing on order. St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. And I'm going to read. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Can you see that? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and wrench you. The name of Jesus is a holy name. 
The name of Jesus is not given to dogs. You have to appreciate, you have to value that name Jesus. That name Jesus requires you to flee from every appearance of sin. That name Jesus that you carry requires you to, to consecrate yourself. Praise God. Everywhere you go, you must know that Jesus lives in you. Every action you make, every step you take, every decision you want to make, make sure that you have consulted Jesus in your heart. And then you make that decision in the name of Jesus. I, I went somewhere and some, someone who was begging for arms came by the car, by the window of the car. And I, had, I only had $20 in my, in my pocket. So when this person came to ask for a dollar, I knew I was going to give him $20. So I took a few minutes, I started to tell him about Jesus. And as, as I was telling him about Jesus, he did not even know I was going to give him $20. He was willing, he was listening. And within the next uh, couple of seconds, this guy began to cry. He was crying. He was crying. He was broken. And then I said, I the out of the $20. I said, I give you this in the name of Jesus. I said, I'm doing this because Jesus taught me to do so. Oh, it felt so good. This guy was impacted so much. I gave him the $20 and he went. He went, you know, with his head down. You could see that this guy, something has touched him. A seed beyond the $20 has been sown in his heart. Everything you do, do it as unto the Lord. Make sure you have the Jesus backing. When I say Jesus backing, I mean the word of God. You must have a scripture in your mind in every decision you make. Why do you do what you do? Praise God. Orderliness. Order, orderliness in the way we think, in the way we make decisions. We consult the word of God. Amen. And now what this is saying to us here is reminding us to put, this, put things in order. You can, for instance, here it says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. In other words, there are so many interpretations you could get from that. The Bible says it is hard for a carnal man to understand spiritual things. It is hard for a natural man to understand spiritual things. Don't be arguing spiritual things with people who are carnal. It's a waste of your time. Praise God. People who don't understand spiritual etiquette, you don't discuss spiritual things with them. Except you're just teaching them about Jesus. You know, you know there are some ways you teach someone you know, at the beginning about Jesus. You know, you want to feed milk to a baby. You know, you want to feed a baby, you have to give the baby milk. Because milk is what they will understand. You know, milk is a, the basic food for a baby. Praise God. By the time comes, they begin to eat, you know, rice and, and then meat. Okay? So, be very careful. Don't cast, don't put that which is holy onto dogs. You also, as a vessel of the Lord, you are considered to be holy. Don't hang around dogs. And don't be doing things dogs do and, and claim that you have Jesus in you. The Bible says our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. If my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, I can't just go anywhere. I can't just talk anyhow. I can't just make any decision anyhow. I won't. Because I consider myself to be holy. I'm not a dog. I don't talk like dog. I don't take actions like dog. I don't go back to my vomit like dogs. I don't do that. My name is my name. My year is my year. Praise God. Now the other one says, Neither cast ye, ye your pearls, something precious. Don't put it before pigs. That's what that means. Swine means pigs. The name of Jesus must not be rubbed on the ground. Don't rub the name of Jesus. Don't call the name of God in vain. As a role model in this ministry. As a role model for God. Praise God. Representing God everywhere you go. You must, because you bear the vessels of the Lord, you must carry it with clean hands. Let's look at Psalms 24. Psalms 24, from verse 1. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Yes, Lord, for he has founded it upon the seas and established upon the floors. I will say thank you. Go to the next verse. Amen. He has found it upon the seas and established upon the floods. Go to the next verse. Who shall, set, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? As a role model, you are standing in his holy place. 
God has called you, He has appointed you to stand in a holy place, to put on the regalia of an apostle, to put on the regalia, you know, an apparel of a royal diadem. And for that reason, you can't talk anyhow. You can't make decisions anyhow. You can't try to please people, including family members, including family members who are not on the Lord's side. Don't be sentimental about things like that. Don't be. Stand for God. Amen. Stand for God. Define your relationship with God. Then don't let anybody pollute it. Don't give them permission to pollute it. Honor your parents. Honor your brothers. Honor your sisters. The way of the Lord. But don't let them mess up your stand with God. Learn to put your foot down when you have to put your foot down. Because temptations will come even from family members. Peter told Jesus that when Jesus told him he was going to be, be crucified, Peter said, no, we don't want that to happen. You know what Jesus told Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. You have to learn to say, get thee behind me to some family members. If they, if they allow the enemy to want to use them. Praise God. God is calling you to be a role model. Where God first. God becomes first in every decision you make. You respectfully tell people around you, I respect what you're saying, but this is a decision I have made with my God. I don't want to offend you, but this is a decision I've made with my God. If you want me to do something else that has nothing to do, that, that my faith will not have to be in question, then I will do it for you. You want me to give you a right to something, I could do that for you. If it, it will not conflict with my time in service, I will do that. Whatever you want me to do, I will do for you, but when your values are fighting against the values of the kingdom to which I have obliged myself to, I'm sorry, I can't go there. I can't go there. Praise God. You have to be able to take your stand. Now, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Now, watch this. He that has clean hands. He that has clean hands. And a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully? Cleanse. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. It says, The body, the body, go ye out from, from thence. Touch no unclean thing. All of the next. And this is not a ministry where people will be clubbing, doing the things of the world, and then coming to hold the mic and trying to exhort other people. It won't work. The fire of the Holy Ghost will consume such person because it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. Not in this place. It may work in some other place. The standard there is so, is so fired up by the presence of God that we, we, will, we, we will not allow hypocrites in this ministry. Hallelujah. Isaiah 52, 11 says, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. He said, Be ye clean. Ah, this part is very important. He said, Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. I'm going to say that two more times. Be ye clean. You got to be clean. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. You have been appointed. You have been appointed to represent His holiness, His royal highness. And it's a good appointment. It's a honorable appointment. It's an enviable appointment. Amen. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Be honest with people. Be, when you talk to people, be, be, be pleasant. You know, let the Spirit of God find a place in your heart, find expression in your heart. Let the Spirit of God apologize when you need to. If you if you err, if you make any mistake, apologize within this the, within that the confines of you know your any area where you feel that you know you know what I think I got this wrong. Apologize. Move on. Amen. All otherness in what we do in the house of God. 
Look at the same Isaiah 52 verse 7. Isaiah 52 verse 7. Now, the Lord says, watch this now. He says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. God is saying your feet. It's going to make them beautiful because you are a role model. You are working for him. Amen. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring them good tidings, that publish peace, that bring them good tidings of good and publish salvation. When you share online, when you when you make yourself available to 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 do things that will help the world to move forward, whether through social media, whether being here in person, you know, getting things moving. For the work of God, however way you can, just getting them moving. God is saying, How beautiful upon the mountains your feet, because you are doing good things, good tidings. Publish in peace, you bring good tidings of good, you publish salvation. Salvation. That's why when the when the man of God is ministering, when the woman of God is ministering, and you have the opportunity to share to bless other lives, go ahead and share. You don't have to be reminded to share. You don't have to. Because you want to touch lives. Soul winning is on your mind. You want to win a soul. You want to sow a seed. Publish your salvation. That said unto Zion. By God, reign it. By God, reign it. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Alright, now. The next thing I want to do now, people of God. I want to go to the Headship of Christ in the church. Part of the order God has put in His church. Let's turn our Bibles now to a, a brother God first. I'd like for you to be very quick here. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. We can all write this down, but you can predict Ephesians 1 22. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, Psalms chapter 68 verse 18, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8, Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. I'm also going to send this video to every one of us so that you can, you can grab all the scriptures. I'm just going to go over them once again. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, Psalms chapter 68 verse 18, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8, Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. All these scriptures remind us of the order in the church of God. Christ is the head of the church and has put all things under his and gave him to be head over all things to the church. God gave him, amen, to be head over all things to the church. God bless you, my brother. So God has elevated Jesus. Hallelujah. God has elevated Jesus to be head over all things. Praise God. Especially as it relates to the church. Go back to the previous verse. Remember what I was sharing with us, how a woman had said that she, she was fighting some demons and she called the name of Jesus. And when she called the name of Jesus, she felt as though the demons did not understand the language she was saying. As if she had to speak another language. Now, don't get me wrong, we understand the concept of speaking in tongues. That's not even the point. The point, the correction I gave her was that you have to be strong in your work with God. The Bible says, submit yourselves to God and then rebuke the devil. So, you cannot rebuke the devil if you are not submitted to God. That's the soul that it is. You know, you have some men who proclaim that I'm the head of the home, but they are not submitted to God. Meanwhile, they want the wife to be compliant with the same <laughs> word of God. That wife, submit yourselves to your own husband as unto the, the law. But they themselves, they are not submitted to God. So there's 
There's a mismanagement of the word of God there, and that's not good. So, the name of, of Jesus, it pleases God that all fullness dwells in Jesus, in that name. That at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow, of things in heaven, of things on the earth, of things under the earth. So I told that woman, I said, you need to reevaluate your walk with God. And then we began to talk about some things, and then I found out that there were some things that she was doing that she shouldn't be doing. You can't be doing some wrong things, and then you still want the grace of God to abound. Apostle Paul said it perfectly in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. He says, Shall we continue in sin and expect that grace to abound? You want to live in sin? You also want the grace of God to be upon your, your life. It doesn't work that way. You can't do, you can't do that. You, you want to continue to live in your, in your sinful life and then you want God to bless you. You want to continue to lie you want to continue to be, you know, not consistent with the things of God? And you want God to be consistent in blessing you? Is God a fool? You want God to empower you, but you're not positioning yourself to be empowered. It doesn't work that way. Even the disciples who became apostles, Jesus gave them instructions to go and tarry in Jerusalem, where they will be endowed with power from on high. These people have to sacrifice, like we have sacrificed to be here, like we have sacrificed to be connected today. These people have to sacrifice. They sacrifice their time. They sacrifice their resources. The Bible says they were in one accord. And the power of the Holy Ghost fell upon them on the day of Pentecost. And they began to speak in different languages. They began to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. So Christ is the head of the church. I'm going to read one more scripture as it relates to that. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. This one I'm going to read. It says, but I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man. And the man is the head of the woman. And God is the head of Christ. I'm going to say this one, one more time. Very important, people of God, that we understand orderliness in the household of faith. Orderliness in our confession, in our profession of Christ, of preaching the good news of Christ. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man.